The Shortest Day by Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Jesse Reich. This is about celebrating the winter solstice. In late autumn, in the northern part of the world, squirrels hide nuts, foxes grow thick fur coats, and flocks of birds fly to warmer places. The sun rises later each morning and sets earlier each evening. Each day it appears lower in the southern sky. As the sun gets lower and lo lower, the north gets less and less daylight. The air grows colder. Chickadees fluff their feathers to keep warm. Woodchucks hibernate in their burrows and white tailed deer nuzzle through the snow to find the last blades of grass. On short winter days, children bundle in warm clothes and walk through a frosty white world, dragging long shadows behind them. On long winter nights, Families eat dinner while it's dark outside. Children wonder when the days will get long again so they can play outside after dinner like they did in summer. In the north, on or around December 21st, the sun reaches its lowest point on the horizon, making that day the shortest day of the year. Like all days, December 21st has 24 hours, but it's called the shortest day because it has the few, fewest hours of daylight. The shortest day called the winter solstice is the beginning of winter. And in some places, winter means cold, nose nipping weather. The earth tilts as it moves around the sun. When the northern part of the earth tilts away from the sun, the north gets less and less light than the southern part. Long ago, people didn't understand how the earth tilts and moves around the sun. They didn't understand why each day had less sunshine than the day before. Some believed that evil spirits made the sun go away. People feared that the sun wouldn't shine on them anymore, making their world cold and dreary dark. They needed the sun's warmth and light. So did their plants, which they needed for food. They held ceremonies that lasted for weeks to persuade their gods to bring the suns back. Over the years, people noticed that after short days, the days got gradually longer. Joyous people bathed in the sun's warmth and light. They celebrated their harvests. About 5,000 years ago, people who study the sky noticed that day after day, the sun sets in different places on the western horizon. They discovered that when the sun set furthest south, that was the shortest day. These early astronomers planned to mark the shortest day. Then each year, people would know when the days would start getting longer again. On the day when the sun reached its southernmost point on the horizon, the astronomers carried out their plan. Workers stacked stones to frame the setting sun. They made a special opening, like a keyhole or the eye of a needle. When the setting sun's rays beamed through that opening, people knew the shortest day was over. Days gradually got longer for the next six months. When the sun appeared farthest to the north, its rays shone through another keyhole. People knew it was the longest day of the year, the first day of summer. In China, over 3,000 years ago, astronomers measured shadows to determine the shortest day. The longest shadows appeared on the shortest day because the sun was at its lowest point in the sky. They knew that as the sun appeared higher in the sky, the shadows would get shorter and the days would get longer. Over 2,000 years ago, Romans celebrated the shortest day with festivals and merrymaking. They gave evergreen branches to friends as a sign of good luck. Evergreen wreaths decorated their doors. Since these plants stayed green when others turned brown, they reminded the Romans of the coming spring. Mistletoe and holly hung in their homes because plants that survived the harsh winter were symbols of life. Many people believed these plants would bring strength to their families. Almost 1,000 years ago, Europeans celebrated the winter solstice. Druid priests of England and Ireland decorated oak trees with golden apples and candles to represent harvest and light. In Sweden, a festival of light celebrated the return of longer days. On St. Lucia's Day, girls wore crowns of evergreens and candles to rekindle the sun's fire as they delivered warm buns to family and friends. Boys went from door to door singing to their neighbors for a few coins. Around the same time in history, the Incas of Peru marked the shortest day with a festival in honor of the sun. At dawn, when the sun first appeared, shouts of happiness rang out. When the Incas used a shiny surface to reflect the sun rays into fluffy, dry cotton. The sun heated the cotton and made it burst into flame. 
They carried the fire to their temples and kept it burning on the altars all year because it came from one of their gods, the sun. <clears throat> Today, people still celebrate at the beginning of winter by decorating their houses, lighting the darkness, gathering together, and exchanging gifts. They no longer worry that the sun will disappear forever. People know the days get colder when their part of the earth tilts away from the sun. They know the days get shorter when the sun appears lower in the sky. People celebrate the shortest day because longer days follow. Flocks of birds will return, seedling oak trees will sprout, and children can play outside after dinner. For more than 5,000 years, people have welcomed the winter solstice because it's a new beginning.